Hi, this is Greg for Lightwave Digital, and today we're going to take a look at creating a photorealistic flyby using a Jedi Starfighter. There's some external assets that we need for this, and I'll go over roughly the steps that you need to follow to make this happen. So right now I'm in Modeler, and I have the model imported. And if we take a look into Layout, here we're looking at this in VPR, but if we come into Texture Layout, you can't really see very much, but if we come into VPR, this is the angle that we have. And we end up with something that looks like this. And as you can see, it's not too bad. Now there's a couple different things going on that we'll go over here. So this is really simple to do and this is really one of the great things about Lightwave is that you can create something that's pretty compelling and photorealistic with relative ease. The amount of animation that we have to do here is really not that much. We animate the camera a little bit, we animate the Jedi Starfighter, and then we add a procedural to create another layer of animation. So we have a lot of looks like a lot going on in this scene and it's really just three basic animations combined into one. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning and we'll go kind of step by step through this process. First thing that you're going to need to get started is this Ultimate Vehicles Pack for Star Wars and it's on the website sci-fi3d.com and these are all free to use. All you need to do is credit the artist and there's three packages to download and so you just download those. In this case I chose the Jedi Starfighter but you could choose any one that you want. Fortunately this actually comes as a LWO or light wave object so it's fantastic and it's really ready to go. If I go to my downloads this particular Jedi Starfighter is in the vehicles part 2 under Jedi Fighter and it's Lightwave 7.5 and you'll see it's an LWO and I simply go open and it comes in just fine. Now there's a lot that you can do with this if you want but I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in as it's configured already and all we need to do is just save this and I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little bit different name here so I don't overwrite the original file and we'll go save and then I can just go ahead and send this over to layout and there it is and we're good to go so the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to get an HDRI image and that will provide the sky that we need so the next thing that we need to get is an HDRI image and for that we're going to go to polyhavenhere.com and under HDRIs there's several to choose from but I'm just choosing symmetrical garden 02 so if we click on that you'll see it comes in as a 4k EXR and we're just gonna go ahead and download this so go ahead and download that and with that downloaded all we need to do then is come back into Lightwave we're gonna go into lights we're gonna go into properties and we are going to switch to the environment light. We're going to turn off use global and time dependent. We're going to right click, add a textured environment, double click into here, click texture there. We want an image map. We're going to set it to spherical and we're going to go ahead and load in that image. And here it is right here, the symmetrical garden. And we want to put this on the Y axis like that. So now let's go ahead with that loaded in. Let's go ahead into VPR and take a look at what we've got here. So of course this is going to look weird and out of proportion because this looks really small. And you'll also notice that it's using standard materials so if we zoom in here a little bit it almost looks like it's painted it doesn't have really that PBR look but we can fix a lot of that just from the distance that we will be away from the item 
And so what we're going to do to fix that is I'm going to change my perspective here because we really want the sky. And you'll notice when we look at it from underneath, it looks fairly PBR even though it's not. But we're going to be seeing this from a distance. And we're not going to we're going to go ahead and turn off the if I go into the scene editor here, we're going to go ahead and turn off the rendering for the landing gear just so that we don't have to contend with that. So there's many ways that you can adjust this, how this is scaled and how this appears in the scene. And I just want to draw your attention to a couple things. So the one thing that I did do is I did expand my scene in frame to 300 so that we have a nice long animation to work with. So this will be at least a 10 second shot. If we make sure that we're on the environmental light and we come up here, we can actually look around the whole 3D environment here. Right? So what we can do here is adjust our perspective. So I want to make sure that I get lots of those clouds in the sky, but I don't really want any ground elements in the shot. I just really want clouds. So once I get kind of that perspective adjusted, then if I go ahead and select the Starfighter itself, I can actually zoom out on it. Here with the jet fighter selected, you can kind of play around and see what looks right to you. So just set it up any way that looks right to you, but just be aware that you're gonna get a little different effect whether you have the environment light selected or you're on the jet fighter itself. So that looks right to me. So once you've got this part framed up, then there's essentially just three animations that we're going to do. One is going to be to animate the Starfighter going from right to left. And then we're going to animate a procedural going from left to right. And then we're going to add a little bit of camera movement in there. So those are our three animations. And when we put it all together, we have something that's pretty compelling. So it's really cool. So what I'm going to do now is go from VPR into texture shaded wireframe mode here. And at this level, I have the image clear in my mind of the direction I want this to go because this is the easiest way to animate the Starfighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on it and pull it back kind of out of the frame here. And then let's say if I want to add a little bank, if I come over here and I go to rotation, I should be able to bank it a little bit. So let's say I want to add a little bank in there. Maybe I'll start this way here kind of like that. And I want this to be out of frame. So I'm going to go back here on to position and I'm just going to manually pull that off of the screen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this all the way to the end, 300 frame. So we're going to be coming in on the blue, which is the Z. So even though I can't see it, I can drag this and start pulling it this way or I could just put in a value there like 5 just to get it into the scene where I can grab it again and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this and pull it here and then maybe right about here I'm gonna go ahead and bank it as well and I'm gonna this time I'm gonna bank it more toward me like that so we can see it a little bit and then I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the Z position and I'm just going to go ahead and finish dragging this off of the screen. And so you can play around with this, but it's very easy to create a nice animation here. And this could be sped up in post, however you want to do it is completely up to you. So that's the basic animation that we have set up. And if I come back into VPR, I can take another look at it here see if that's what I'm looking for and it'll be going by pretty fast so that's cool and that takes care of our starfighter animation okay so once we have that animation set up what I'd like to do is go ahead and add a little animation to the camera so I'm gonna go ahead and select the camera and then I'm going to go ahead, this is really important, we need to match our perspective right now because we like exactly where we are. And then I'm going to go into camera view here. And there we go. 
and then with the camera selected let's see what's going on here somehow I added in a frame that I don't want there so I'm going to delete this frame I double click this one here I can drag it back to the beginning so here we go and so let's say I'm right here and of course I'm assuming that it's a handheld camera make sure I'm in the current camera view and let's say I'm just gonna turn this way a little bit and maybe pitch it down because I don't know what's going on this thing's flying by and then I'm going to turn back this way like that so we just have a little bit of camera movement in addition to that moving and of course there's no necessarily right or wrong with this these can be adjusted any way that you want them to be okay and that's that so then the last animation that we're going to add is we're going to go back on the light here and we're going to click in the textured environment light we're going to go to texture here and we're going to go ahead and add a layer here add an image map layer and we're going to go ahead and switch this to a procedural. It's going to come in on turbulence. And we're going to go ahead and increase the frequencies here. And I don't know that we need to add any contrast. I think just the frequencies here. You can play around with these values. And then what we're going to do is if we're going to go on the position and click here and go into the graph editor. And we're going to animate this to move from the left to the right. So this will add some really nice motion in there. So I just click here to add a keyframe. I don't have to get it perfect, but we'll put it right about there. And I know this is 300 frames, so I'm gonna adjust this to 300. And I want this to be exactly one meter, so I'm just gonna type in one. And it's kind of going like, whoops, I didn't mean to add that key there. So let me get rid of that. There we go. And then what we can do is we can also adjust this opacity down a little bit if that's coming on a little too heavy. So there's that. And then the next thing that we can do, I mean, this adds a nice flavor to things. But we can also, yeah, so we may really want to speed this up. So I would probably do that in post as far as speeding things up. But we have a lot of nice animation going on. And it's surprising because this is a still backdrop. One other thing that I like to do, we may not need to do it too much because we have this nice turbulence effect, is it sometimes what I'll do also is I'll go into render here go into render properties and we'll go to volumetrics and I'll add some volumetric scattering but what I'll do is let me turn this way 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 down because that's way too much but I like to add that a touch of that in as well and then what I'll do is I'll adjust the scattering to be a color of the sky so I'll just pick a bluish color from the sky here, like that. And we'll just got a touch of that. So we get some volumetrics going on there as well. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing I would say is we need to double check our color space. So if we hit D and we go to CS, we just make sure we're in sRGB. And that's it. There's so many possibilities and things you can do, but the, the bottom line is once you know these basic techniques, you can create something that's really cool really fast. So anyway, that's all I had. I hope you found it helpful and have a great May the 4th.